All right, so in this series here where we're working on simultaneous equations, another method you could use to solve two equations that are right stacked on top of each other, like you see here, is, called, is, is what we call the elimination method. This is another method we can use. And the way this method pretty much works is we're saying, if I have two equations, look at the x's and look at the y's and ask yourself, which one could you eliminate? Meaning, um, for example, one way to, if you look at what we have here, we have 2x and we have 5x, but we have minus y and we have plus 2y. Do you agree with me that for this y, it would be easy to eliminate it if only we had a 2 here at this top number? If you had, instead of minus y, we had minus 2y, because then minus 2y plus this 2y at the bottom would just cancel out. And that's what you're looking to do. You're looking to eliminate either the x or the y so that you can just have one of the other one. Okay, so if we eliminate it, the y, then we'll have the x only left in the equation and we can solve for that. So let's do just that. So the question then is, okay, how do you eliminate, how do you introduce a two here? Because everything else is set up. You have the plus minus already set up there, both y's. You just need a two here. Well, to get a two there, guys, you then need to go ahead and just for the whole equation, you need to multiply two. Let me do that right. You have to multiply two. Because if I multiply two by the whole the entire top, I will create the two I want here. But keep in mind that you cannot just, you cannot, you don't want to just multiply two at this y. You have to multiply two by everything. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply two by this entire top and I'll put it at the bottom here. So if I multiply two by two, that's going to be 4x. Then two by the negative y is going to be negative 2y. And then two by the five is going to be a 10. So this is the new equation we have now. So now at this point, I'm going to consider this second equation. Let me name these. This is equation one, it's equation two, equation three, okay? So at this point, I'm going to consider two and three together, equation two and three together. Well, if I look at two and three together, kind of like, then the, the word I'm going to use here is combined. Like if I combine five X with four X, I produce nine X. It's kind of like an addition, but I don't want to use the word addition because it might confuse you if you see a negative sign. So I'll use the word combine. So combine 5x with 4x is 9x. Combine plus 2y with minus 2y, that goes away, cancels out, which eliminates, which is what we wanted. If you combine negative 28 with plus 10, you're going to get a negative 18 because it's like you owe $28, but you have $10. So you're still going to owe because you owe more than you have. You're going to owe negative, but there needs to be a difference to go down to subtract kind of. So 28 minus 10, that's that. All right, we want the x divide by y. Um, sorry, divide by 9 on both of them. So it's going to be x equal to negative 2. So negative 2 is my x value. Now, obviously, to solve for the y, all you have to do is just plug that number back into any of the equations you have up here. Um, looking at what I have available to me, I'm probably going to plug it into this top one that I have here, the 2x minus y equal to 5. So I'm going to say 2, well, my x is minus 2 because I just found that over here, minus y equal to 5 because I'm trying to look for the y one. So this is going to be negative 4, negative y equal to 5. Well, guys, you want the y by itself, so you need to get rid of this plus, no, this minus 4. And the way you get rid of a minus 4 is you add a 4 on both sides, whatever you do to the left, you do to the right. So this goes away, minus y equal to nine. Now you want the nine, the y by itself. You don't want this minus in front of it. So um, you divide by negative one, negative one on both of them, the negatives go away. So y is negative nine, okay? So that's your answer there. All right, so let's use the elimination method over here. Now on the, over here, let's take a look at 13. Guys, you can eliminate either the x or y. If you look at the two, but you have to make it a smart decision about which one is easier to eliminate. If I look at this, even though this 10x and minus 6x, th there's a minus here, the way to eliminate the x here would mean I have to multiply 6 at the top here and multiply 10 at the bottom here so that I can get um, a, like a 60. I guess you could also do something like a 3 here and a 5 here to get a positive 30x, negative 30. As you can see, that's kind of a lot to do. Um, so actually, I will pick to eliminate the y here. And the way I'm going to eliminate y here, since I have 6y here, it would be nice if this bottom one was a negative 6y so that they would cancel out. You want the number at the top and bottom to be the same number but different signs. So 
if you take a look at that for what we need to do here, I'm just going to take this bottom one and I'm going to multiply it not just by 6, but by negative 6. Because by the time it gets to this y, I want it to be negative 6y and then to cancel out with this plus 6y up top. All right, so if I do that, I'm going to multiply this negative 6 by everything. If I do that, what do I produce? On this first one, I'm going to produce 36x, right, because the negative times negative becomes positive. And then I'm going to do negative 6 times y to be negative 6y. Multiply negative 6 times 4, and that's going to be negative 24. So this is what I just produced now. So I'm going to go ahead and label this as equation 1. This is my equation 2, but what I just produced is the equation 3. So if you combine, right now what I need to focus on, what you, we need to focus on is focus on combining equation 1 with equation 3, right? Equation 1 with 3, because those are the two that have the opposite y's that I want to cancel. All right, so when I do that, I'm going to do equation 1 with 3 for the x's. So it's going to be 10x with 36 combined. That's going to be a combined 46x because I'm adding it. And then 6y with negative 6y, those guys cancel. You now have 24 with negative 24. That also cancels. So we, pretty much what you get is 0 on the right side, while on the left side, you have got 46x. Well, to do this, just divide by 46 on both sides. So x is going to be 0 right? Zero over anything is always zero. So I just produced x as zero. Well, since I know x is zero, to find the y is going to be easy. Just plug it back into any of the equations you have up here. I like this second one here because it's it just looks easier to, to handle. Um, actually, no, I take that back. I don't like it because it has a negative. I always try to avoid any substitution that has a negative in, inside. So I'm going to try this top one. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer anyway. So I'm going to plug this 0 in this top one. So it's going to be 10 times 0 because I'm putting x in 0 plus 6y equal to 24. 10 times 0 is 0 plus 6y equal to 24. So really all you have, you know, 0 doesn't matter. So it's like that's gone. So I have 6y equal to 24. So you divide by 6 on both sides. So y is 4. So I've just found my x to be 0, my y to be 4. All right, let's do the last one here. Um, if you look at 15 here, again, you, you analyze what you have and say, okay, which one is the easier one to eliminate? Now, this one actually gives us a number of different options to try to eliminate. I like the Y's, again, because for this top one, all I have to do is multiply this by 3. Because if I multiply by 3, I would get, what, 12Y here. And there's already a negative 12Y here. So that's a really good one. But for some of you, you may say, well, the X is also easy to do because all you have to do is multiply this top one by minus 2 because then you get negative 4x, and that will combine with this 4x, and that works as well. Either one is fine. Um, I probably would stick with the y one because I already have my plus minus set up for me. I don't have to multiply by a negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of this. Let's do that again. I'm going to think of this first one. And again, I'm trying to eliminate the y. Again, the y is not the only one you can eliminate. It just so happens to be that all three questions I picked have y's eliminated but you can always eliminate the x but you just want to make a decision on which one is easier to eliminate all right so i want to eliminate y so i'm going to multiply this top part by uh three because i want to produce a 12 y here but even though this is the one i'm focused on i have to multiply this three by everything okay so when i do that i'm going to produce um let me i'm going to produce a what do i put for six x there and then here it will be 12 y and uh, 3 times 24 is uh, so, so 2 there, 1, 6, 72. Okay, all right, so I have a 72 there. So, so again, this is my equation 1, this is my equation 2, this is my equation 3. All right, so if I combine, and right now I'm going to combine the equation 2 and 3 together because 1 was modified to give me 3, so it's 2 and 3 that I need to focus on. If you look at it, uh, 4x, 6x combined is 10x. This goes away. And then if you add this up, you're going to get 80. So obviously you divide by 10 to get the x by itself, so x is 8. So guys, now that I know what my x is 8, and to solve for my y is easy. All I have to do is just plug it back. So I'm going to plug this x back into any of the equations. I think I like, let's see, I like the top one. So it's going to be 2 times, so it's 2 times x, but my x is 8, so I plug 8 there, plus 4y equal to 24. So this is 16 plus 4y equal to 24. Now I want the y by itself, so I need to get rid of 16 on both sides. 24 minus 16 is going to produce uh, 8 there. Yeah, 8 there. So this is 4y. 
and you divide by 4 on both sides to get rid of the 4. So the y is 2. So we just found that x to be 8 and y is 2. So this is how you do simultaneous equations using the elimination method. In the previous video, I did substitution method so you can kind of see the difference. My personal favorite is the elimination method because I think you can easily look at any number and just say, hey, this is what I need to eliminate and get it done. But if you have a y equal to something or an x equal to something, the substitution method also works, which I um, dealt with in detail in the previous video.